Welcome back to Second Floor Basement, your go-to source for anime summaries and recaps. Hit subscribe and join the legion of anime aficionados and otakus riding the wave. Get ready for a wild ride with Shangri-La Frontier. In the near future, screen-based gaming is replaced with full-dive VR games. The market is soon flooded with low-quality games filled with glitches known as trash games. A percentage of players are obsessed with completing trash games despite the glitches. One trash game hunter is Rakuro, who goes by his screen name Sunraku. His classmate Ray has a curse on him, but is too nervous to talk to him. After spending weeks completing his latest game, Rakuro suffers mental burnout and is convinced by local shop owner Mana to play a mainstream game instead, completely free of glitches with 30 million players, Shangri-La Frontier. Sticking with his preferred playstyle, Rakuro creates a wanderer character with twin blades, extra luck bonuses, and minimum armor except for swimming shorts and a bird head mask. Choosing to skip the game introduction, Rakuro begins fighting monsters while heading to the starting town first tier. With increased luck, Rakuro levels up rapidly and is amazed by the glitch-free gameplay, eventually deciding to skip first tier and go to the more advanced town second deal. The bridge there is blocked by first year's area snake boss whom Rakuro attacks with reckless enthusiasm. The introduction Rakuro skipped earlier reveals players may choose any playstyle, including non-combat characters such as academics, merchants, and farmers. Ray, already a powerful warrior in Shangri-La, visits first tier hoping to encounter Rakuro when he starts the game. She is disappointed when he does not appear and assumes Rakuro already visited First Tia and left before she arrived. Despite his expertise of boss fights, Rakuro almost dies, not having known the snake boss usually requires at least three players. His victory promotes him to level 14, but his health continues to drop from the snake venom. He is forced to run all the way to second deal, where veteran player Reiji helps him register a respawn point before he dies so he will not have to start the game over. After respawning, Rakuro realizes his swimming shorts make him stand out, and not in a good way, forcing him to buy normal armor, though he keeps the bird mask. Requiring new weapons, the blacksmith sends him to Diarmar's Swamp to mine ore, which is more difficult than Rakuro first assumed as the realistic swamp mud slows his movement. Now equipped with marsh daggers, Rakuro ignores the blacksmith's warnings and goes hunting monsters at night. Ray decides to search for Rakuro in second deal, despite the unlikelihood of a new player making it that far alone. Rakuro encounters Lycagon the Night Slayer, a completely unique monster which is so high level not one of the game's 30 million players have ever defeated it. Ray learns Rakuro has already reached second deal. Other players notice Ray belongs to one of the seven clans formed to hunt the seven unique beasts, and Ray's case her clan hunts Lycagon. Despite executing perfect strikes on Lycagon's critical weak points, Rakuro's legs are bitten off, but he swears to find and defeat Lycagon before he completes any more of the game. Respawning, he finds himself afflicted with Lycagon's curse. He cannot equip armor to his legs or body, though they are now immune to magic. He can no longer fight monsters weaker than himself and NPCs will treat him differently. Plus the curse is permanent unless removed by a saint or killing Lycagon. Forced to return to his swim shorts, Rakuro suddenly encounters a unique scenario, an invitation to the Rabbit City Rabbituza which he accepts, unaware the recommended skill level is 80. Inside the scenario, he is congratulated by a white rabbit named Imol for embodying the spirit of the Vorpal Rabbit, willingly attacking a superior enemy while hitting only the weak points. For Lycagon to curse him was actually Lycagon marking him as a worthy opponent. As such, Rakuro is the first player ever invited to meet Rabbit King Vysik. A brief flashback shows Ray started playing the game on Mana's advice, on the promise Mana would also have Rakuro start playing so Ray could get close to him. Ray still cannot locate Rakuro, but Mana convinces her to keep trying. Rakuro reads online walkthroughs and confirms he is definitely the first to meet Vysik. Vysik offers him vocal training and equips him with a collar that reduces his experience gains by 50% but increases his status gains by 250%. Rakuro is unexpectedly invited to BERP, an old trash game used as a meeting spot for hardcore trash hunters by his online friend Katso. 
Ketsu is confused Rakuro would play a mainstream game until Rakuro explains his rivalry with Lycagon. Ketsu considers playing Shangri-La too, as does Arthur Pensilgan, another trash hunter and fan of Rakuro. Due to many new players over summer break, Rakuro temporarily leaves the unique vocal scenario to focus on reaching the next town, their dreamer. Emol accompanies him as an NPC follower so they can teleport back to Rabatuza at any time. Unfortunately, having never been seen before, players quickly take pictures wanting to know how they can get an Emol NPC. Rakuro confirms weak monsters now flee from him. He chooses to instead defeat the area boss, Mud Digger, so he can travel to Thirdrima. Unfortunately, Mud Digger lives in a swamp which slows Rakuro's movements again. That night, Rakuro has a nightmare and Mole is a demon eating his character when he logs out. Rakuro tries to rely on skills but almost dies until Emol saves him, realizing he was being so used to solo playing, he forgot Emol was his party member and can help fight. After dealing with Digger, a lot of damage Rakuro is thrown into the air to die from the extreme fall which cannot be avoided by any skill. Luckily, Emol teleports him on top of Mud Digger, turning his fall into an overpowered headbutt that kills Mud Digger instantly. Rakuro is pleased by the victory but disappointed in himself for using Emol since she is stronger than him. Approaching Thirdrima, Emol disguises as a human girl, though Rakuro only wearing shorts still draws unwanted attention. Unfortunately, the photograph of him has spread and players now know he has a unique NPC and has fought Lycagon, bringing him to the attention of Saiger, a member of Rei's Lycagon hunter clan, as well as many members of Ashura Kai, an assassin clan that kill other players for fun. Rakuro is accosted by Animalia, an animal-obsessed player who wants her own vocal rabbit NPC. Suddenly, they are ambushed by Arthur Pensilgan, a level 99 player killer who has come for Rakuro. Rakuro recognizes Arthur as a fellow trash game hunter. They met in a post-apocalyptic trash game where gamers often ignored the impossible main quests to focus on fighting each other for resources. Arthur fought her way to becoming queen and the game's unofficial final boss, the dystopian empress. In the end, Rakuro killed her in a suicide mission, beginning their unusual friendship slash rivalry. Arthur has traveled all the way from the 50th city Fictitia to kill him. Animalia reveals Arthur is the level 99 second in command of Ashura Kai, specializing in assassinating players even higher level than herself. As they fight, Arthur passes a demand from Ashura Kai's leader to publicly share how to access the unique scenario for Vorpal Rabbit NPCs. Emol cannot sustain her human form and reverts back to a rabbit. To protect Emol, Animalia attacks Arthur, allowing Rakuro to dash for Thirdrima's gate to establish a respawn point, but is stopped by Arthur's fellow assassins. Animalia is defeated and begins dying of poison magic. From nowhere, Rakuro is rescued by Rei, having finally learned his location from her sister, Saiger 100, from the photograph of him with Lycagon's mark. Arthur is delighted to see Rei, whom she knows in-game as Saiger Zero, but the distraction lets Animalia attack her with her unique magic spell. Animalia's spell kills both herself and Arthur, surprising the assassin so much Rakuro is able to escape into Thirdrima. Rei is ecstatic Rakuro briefly spoke to her, but blames the assassins for the conversation not lasting longer and kills them all. Arthur takes her loss good-naturedly and invites Rakuro to talk later in the post-apocalyptic game, along with his other online friend Katso. Rakuro teleports to Rabatuza to begin playing the unique scenario. For his first training session, he is forced to fight a group of pack hounds, all level 65 or higher. Rei decides next time she sees Rakuro in-game she will send him a friend request. After dying seven times in a row, Rakuro figures out the packhound's attack patterns and kills them. His opponents grow progressively stronger, a tentacle parasite, a goblin berserker, a dinobor, a toxic eagle, an armored larva, and execu panther, a twin-head tiger, and a golem. This only promotes him to level 31 due to the reduced experience points of the Vorpal Collar. Vysake turns up to watch the 10th fight against a monster he caught just for Rakuro, Aberrant Woodmage level 120. 
A tree type sorcerer so strong Vysake only demands Rakuro survive 5 minutes in order to win the round. Rakuro discovers the Woodmitch is impervious to physical attacks, so all he can do is dodge the attacks. After 2 minutes, Rakuro starts to suffer mental strain and considers just dying as there are no penalties for dying in training matches. He then feels disgusted himself, having grown used to always taking the easiest path to victory in trash games. He successfully steals Woodmitch's staff, removing his ability to use spells. Dodging until the time expires becomes easier and Rakuro wins. Woodmitch angrily breaks the rules and tries to kill him, but Vaisate kills Woodmitch and gives Rakuro his reward, a title as an honorary Rabatuzan citizen and removal of the troublesome Vorpal Collar. Rakuro is disappointed until his citizenship unlocks another unique scenario, the Vorpal Epic, as it has complicated instructions that require researching Shangri-La's highly detailed world history, Rakuro decides to play the main game and go exploring for a while. While unable to equip clothes to his torso, Emil's brother Pete gives Rakuro a kafia headdress with full body robe, so assassins will not recognize him. While deciding which city to visit next, Forfolkshire, Fivel, or Sixenvelt, Rakuro spots Ray watching him ominously. Arthur is disgusted by the weakness of Ashura Kai and their leader Orsula. They used to be proud assassins until the game began applying penalties to murderers. Now they are just another clan collecting experience and hoarding equipment. Ashura Kai is also the only clan who know the location of unique monster with them in the Tomb Guard, but dare not attack him in case they lose their valuable equipment. Arthur decides to kill Weatherman herself. Rei surprises Rakuro with a friend request. Still unaware Saiju Zero is Rei, Rakuro assumes she is trying to manipulate him for access to the unique scenario and accepts the request, planning to manipulate her instead. Having become online friends, Rei accepts he prefers to play solo and lets him travel to Forfolkshire alone, planning to talk to him later now she has his contact information. Passing through the prismatic forest with them all, Rakuro is amazed by the variety of insect-type monsters, even witnessing a battle between Empire Bees and a Quad Beetle. After killing the weakened beetle for its drop items, Rakuro sets out to find the area boss, Clown Spider. Rakuro is unable to enter the boss arena as other adventurers are currently attempting to beat it, so Rakuro must wait his turn. After watching those adventurers die, Rakuro confronts Clown Spider and requests Emol not to assist him. After knocking Clown Spider from its web, he weakens it by dropping boulders on it, then he stabs its critical weak point and beats it without taking any damage himself. Sun Raku receives an email from Arthur, as does Katso, who recently started playing the game and has already defeated Mud Digger. Arthur invites them to help her defeat Weatherman in two weeks, the day after a massive update that adds new missions, characters, and areas to explore. Rakuro is suspicious of her motives. In the real world, Rei is able to speak to Rakuro, who barely remembers her name or that they attend the same school. Before she can reveal she is Saiju Zero, Rakuro rushes off to meet Arthur, but Rei considers talking to him at all a big success. Emol is terrified Rakuro plans to fight Weatherman and rushes to tell Vaisik. Rakuro later learns why from Arthur, in Shangri-La if an NPC dies they are dead and gone permanently, Emol will never respawn and her role in the unique Vorpal scenario will be over. Vaisik is unhappy with Rakuro's plans, but Rakuro explains the Shurakai are exploiting a game mechanic, harvesting experience by starting a fight with Weatherman, then running away without actually fighting. Arthur plans to give Weatherman the fight he deserves. Vysak feels sympathy for Weatherman, cursed with being undead and unable to join his wife in the afterlife, so instead Weatherman guards her tomb. Granting him death is therefore honorable and true to the Vorpal soul. Vysak takes Rakuro's Vorpal chopper knives and personally ascends them, combining Rakuro's experience of fighting Lycagon with the armor of the Quad Beetle, resulting in the Vorpal knives Moonblade waxing and Moonblade, waning, one which sacrifices health for powerful strikes, and one that restores health at the same speed as it is lost. Unfortunately, he must be level 50 to use them, meaning he needs to go up 19 levels in only 2 weeks. 
Arthur sends him and Katso to train in the futuristic iron ruins of the divinity near Sixenville, though Rakuro is confused when Arthur gives him a fishing rod, claiming he will definitely need it to survive the ruins. After defeating Sentry Robots, Rakuro and Katso follow Arthur's complicated map to a hidden room within the ruins rumored to be tailored for fast leveling. Emol is amazed by Rakuro's explanation that Katso is a man in a female character body. They find the room, Tearlight Lake, which according to Arthur contains the monster Lives Tide Lake Serpent. If caught with a fishing rod it bestows a lot of experience points. After dragging Lives Tide to the surface, Rakuro reveals his temporary weapons, Empire B Twin Blades, made for him by Emol's sister Bilak until he can use the Moon Blades. After defeating Livestide, Katso reveals skill linking, a core game mechanic along with the ability to get a job or join a guild, all which Rakuro missed by skipping the tutorial in first tier, making the game almost unnecessarily difficult for him. After several days, Rakuro and Katso reach level 42 and 40, respectively, though Rakuro hides his foolishly skipping first tier from Arthur to avoid embarrassment. Arthur gives them until full moon, the one time a month they can talk to unique ghost NPC Setsuna of bygone days, who provides access to weathermen. Arthur leads them to Setsuna's secret hiding place in the prismatic forest. She explains weatherman blames himself for her death, which occurred during a silly marital argument, so he sealed her grave behind a barrier powered by moon magic, hence why it is only accessible once a month when the moon is dark. She hopes they defeat Weatherman so they can be together again. From her modern clothing and language, Rakuro suspects her backstory involved dying in the game's Age of Divinity, and wonders if she knows anything about the Vorpal scenario. Rakuro is aware Arthur's real identity is Tawa, a supermodel constantly hounded by her fans, and suspects it causes her to feel sympathy for Setsuna. Based on Weatherman's fighting style, Rakuro skips leveling up and instead trains his own playstyle not in Shangri-La, but in the BERP trash game. There he meets Dragonfly, a first-time novice gamer. Agreeing to a duel, Rakuro shows Dragonfly how to take advantage of glitches. Elsewhere, Rei attempts to write a letter to Rakuro asking to join his party and play together, but everything she writes embarrasses her so she does not send him any of the letters. Dragonfly eventually wins one duel using a double punch glitch Rakuro and other players have not seen before, impressing them as no one has discovered a new BERP glitch in years. In exchange, Rakuro shows her a glitch he discovered, Doppelganger, which creates a glitch clone of himself as an ally in duels. Dragonfly decides to invent a name for her new glitch. Returning to Shangri-La, Rakuro decides to try skill linking by visiting one of Emol's triplet siblings, Elka the Skill Gardener in Rabatuza. He acquires six linked skills and a Vorpal Moonblade skill, not initially realizing Elka is completely money obsessed and convinces him to spend almost all his coin. Arthur reveals the next problem. Since a Shurikai use Witherman to harvest experience, there will definitely be a Shurikai members there on the day of the duel unwilling to let Witherman actually die. Luckily, a new update has placed a restriction on assassins. If an assassin dies, all their accumulated money and some equipment gets transferred to whoever killed them, leaving them totally harmless when they respawn. Therefore, before they can fight Witherman, Arthur decides they must completely destroy a Shurikai by assassinating all its members. Shangri-La undergoes a major update with new quests, maps, and a new job title. Players notice all shops are sold out of resurrection items. Rei finally sends her letter to Rakuro inviting him to explore the update, but she then receives a message from Saiger 100 that someone revealed the location of Ashurakai's headquarters, so players are organizing a massive revenge attack. Rei is forced to quickly send a letter canceling Rakuro's invite. Both letters leave Rakuro confused. Emol reveals she cannot go with him against Witherman, but gives him a mysterious good luck necklace she made. Ashurakai are wiped out by a massive army led by Rei, so Orcelot and four surviving assassins flee to Witherman's arena, but find the entrance closed as Arthur, Rakuro, and Katso are already inside. Orcelot furiously realizes his sister, Arthur, betrayed Ashurakai. As they confront Witherman, a samurai in futuristic armor, they carry out their plan. 
Arthur has determined Witherman varies his fighting style and stages, so the only way to win is surviving all the stages and hope Witherman surrenders. Rikuro takes the first stage, which lasts 10 minutes, but he is killed. Katso quickly resurrects him, revealing it was Arthur who bought every resurrection item from every town in preparation for the battle. Arthur hands Rikuro and Katso the tear jewel of rebirth for per person since she bought 12 for extras and emergencies before the battle with Weatherman, and the divine life self that lets them revive at half their max HP, 5 per person. She relays the plan they'll follow in order to conquer Weatherman. After they survive the battle for 10 minutes, Weatherman summons his horse, a tactical mount named Kirin. Together they attempt to prevent Weatherman from mounting Kirin by Katso attracting its attention and Rikuro continuing to fight Weatherman. In phase 2, they have to survive for another 10 minutes. When Arthur realizes that Rikuro and Katso are in trouble, she uses the reward scale, a very difficult to acquire item she borrowed from NPCs, which allows one to sacrifice expensive items in return for the ability to bestow temporary stat boosts. She spends the whole fortune for 300 points, giving 100 to Rikuro's luck and stamina, and he succeeds in taking away Witherman's sword. After surviving 20 minutes in the battle against Witherman, Arthur explains the last time Ashura Kai reached Phase 3 in the battle against Witherman, he unleashed a massive instant kill explosion. This time though she knows Witherman is an undead, so as he prepares his explosion she douses him with holy water. As Weatherman burns, Kieran reconfigures itself into a robot to fight Katso and Arthur who prevented helping Weatherman. Rikuro fights Weatherman alone, but decides just surviving another 10 minute stage is boring, instead he wants to really defeat him. As such, he equips a real helmet of quad beetle armor and his moon blades since Weatherman's armor is crumbling from the holy water, meaning he can now take damage. Rikuro's critical attacks succeed in causing Witherman to fall to the ground. Arthur gives Katso an item that boosts him to level 99 temporarily, in exchange for dropping his real level from 50 to 20 afterwards, hoping to destroy Kirin, much to his chagrin. Witherman notices the good luck necklace Rikuro received from Imol and abruptly stops fighting. He mentions someone named Alice, an ID key fragment in Shangri LA's True Frontier. They resume fighting only Witherman is now far quicker, more savage and reveals multiple attacks he would not use before. His next attack destroys Rikuro's helmet and kills him, but Witherman fails to notice Rikuro had already set up another resurrection tool in advance to revive himself instantly. Witherman begins using the same set of multiple attacks repeatedly, ending with the same unavoidable instant death attack, claiming he will not fall until Rikuro surpasses his ultimate move. Rikuro quickly runs out of full resurrection items, leaving only the 50% health recovery items. Rikuro deduces the only way to win is to somehow perfectly parry Witherman's unavoidable instant kill attack. Arthur and Katso manage to shatter the armor around Kirin's waist, exposing its critical weak point. Combining both their strongest attacks, they pierce the weak point and Kirin is destroyed, allowing them to collapse from exhaustion. Rikuro, with no health items remaining, has only one chance for a perfect parry or the whole battle will be a failure. For luck, he dons his original bird mask while Weatherman begins his unavoidable attack. Fusing his moon blades into the single weapon twin moon, Rikuro increases his chance of performing both a perfect parry and critical damage. He also stabs himself, dropping his health to one, allowing him to use a skill to increase his speed. With one perfectly timed move, Witherman's unavoidable attack is parried, snapping his sword and shattering his armor wide open, signaling his defeat. Weatherman congratulates Rikuro on his victory as the arena fills with swirling cherry blossoms. Weatherman praises Rikuro for his skills and names him descendant of the frontier, before crumbling to dust over Setsuna's grave. Setsuna's ghost thanks them and reveals she is not actually the real Setsuna, but is a perfect copy left behind by the real Setsuna to help Weatherman find peace, hence her title Setsuna of bygone days. Now that he can rest in peace, Setsuna's fate is to disappear, but first she tasks them with discovering the truth behind the world by finding Bahamut, though what this is she leaves unclear.
The game announces to all players the first defeat of a unique monster and the start of the next stage of Shangri-La's world story, which even the game's lore researchers did not know existed. Furious at being betrayed, Orcelot and his surviving assassins attack, hoping to take whatever loot they got from Weatherman's defeat, but Arthur activates a friend summoning ability for help, which summons Rakuro's friend Ray. Orcelot and the assassins are killed, passing all of Shurikai's remaining rare items to Arthur. As the only assassin left, Arthur asks Ray to kill her in a duel to atone for her many kills and end a Shurikai forever, which Ray accepts and defeats her in battle. After killing Arthur, Ray asks if Rakuro and Arthur are lovers and is relieved they are not. The friend summoning expires, sending Ray back where she came from before she can ask to join his party. Rakuro retrieves one of Arthur's swords Ray forgot to pick up. At Utopia Entertainment, the company that created Shangri-La Frontier, everyone is panicked as the world story called for Weatherman to be the fourth unique monster killed, not the first. Especially the lead world designers Tsukuyo and Ritsu, and marketing executive Sakai. Vaisek is satisfied at Weatherman finally moving on and offers Rakuro knowledge of the truth behind the world, though he requires Rakuro fetch a receiver, a positioner, and a transmitter from a place called Lightless Barrens, though he gives no indication where in Shangri-La this is. Rakuro finds beating Weatherman made him level 78. He also received the book Weatherman's Truth, a biography of Weatherman's life, and a list of his unique sword moves, though Rakuro must acquire weapons from the Age of Divinity before learning them. He also receives a unique item storage that will protect his items even if he dies. He also finds the storage space already contains armors, weapons, vehicles, and other items, most of which he cannot use. Starting over from level 1, Arthur says goodbye to Setsuna before setting off to find Bahamut. Out in the wilderness, Lycagon continues to wait for Rakuro. Examining the items in the inventoria, Arthur determines none of the armors will function without a non-standard ether reactor, and without the armor, they can't equip any of the weapons. Katsu reveals he received one reactor as loot for defeating Kirin, but it is broken and none of the NPC blacksmiths can repair it. Rakuro suspects Vice could repair it, but before handing it over, Katsu demands to know how to access the Vorpal unique scenario. Rakuro reveals about fighting Lycagon for five minutes without taking damage and Katsu reluctantly concludes he couldn't manage it anyway. Arthur reveals via a complex series of loopholes she managed to keep several items despite Ray killing her, namely the reward scales, Weatherman's biography, Setsuna's brooch, and her favorite weapon. Having seen how much killing a unique monster is worth, they decide to form a clan, the Wolf Gang, that focuses on hunting all the unique monsters instead of just one like other hunter clans. A representative of the Lycagon clan tracks them down, but they flee before he can ask questions. When he tries to find Vaisig, he is nowhere to be found, so Rakuro asks if Bilak is interested in training to obtain the title ancient craftsman needed to repair the reactor. She agrees after much persuading. To become an ancient craftsman Bilak requires a working legacy weapon from the Age of Divinity and a magic application unit from the Road of Past Glories. Fortunately, the Katana Harbinger is available in the Inventoria, but as joint owners of Inventoria Rakuro needs Arthur and Katso's permission for Bilak to dismantle it. Rakuro decides to head for Past Glories first, though it is a long distance away somewhere between the towns Adold and Eleventar. By chance, Lightless Barrens is close to Eleventar where Rakuro needs to find the receiver, positioner, and transmitter for Vaisig. They pass through Forfolkshire into ancient Soul Canyon where Lycagon's curse protects him from miasma and repels undead monsters. After working together to defeat a Dullahan General Rakuro loots its rusty sword Decapitator and gives it to Bilak for repair. From there they move on trying to find the area boss hiding somewhere in the miasma. Rakuro is intrigued that the canyon's upper cliffs are infested with crystal scorpions even Bilak is afraid of his scorpions are often over level 100. Eventually they confront the area boss humming lich, which can only be damaged by holy weapons, which Rakuro does not have. Bilak comes up with a solution, so Rakuro and Imol keep the lich distracted but panic when it splits into seven smaller skeletons. 
By polishing the decapitator sword with holy water bilac removes the rust and gives it a holy attribute which also makes it very fragile. Figuring out each skeleton's attack patterns Rakuro decapitates six of them then works with Bilak to decapitate the original Lich with Decapitator only just avoiding being destroyed itself. With Lich beaten the Miasma vanishes, allowing them to leave the canyon and enter Eight Hold. Bilak and Imol teleport to Rabatuza to rest while Rakuro explores Eight Hold, but as soon as they are gone he recklessly dashes back to the canyon, unable to resist the urge to fight a crystal scorpion. Rakuro climbs the canyon walls and finds the crystal nest cliffs. Immediately, he is attacked by a gigantic scorpion made entirely from crystal and within moments he is surrounded by dozens of scorpions and killed. He refuses to accept defeat, at least until he has gotten something out of it. Returning to the nest, he locates an unusual deposit of black crystals which he manages to collect before being killed again. The crystal turns out to be Aronkaleth Lapis, which has high concentrations of magic. Still unsatisfied, he returns again with a plan. He first tricks the scorpions into running into each other, shattering their hard shells, then teleports into the inventoria as an emergency refuge. Then after the scorpions leave, he teleports out again and collects the broken shells. Repeating this, he collects vast amounts of materials, but refuses to give up until he has collected one of their stingers as a trophy. With careful timing, he tricks multiple scorpions into targeting the stinger of a single scorpion, snapping it off. Unfortunately, he mistimes his next attack and just misses grabbing the stinger before he is killed again. Despondent, he decides to quit temporarily and instead show the materials to Bilak. Emol worries Rakuro might be going mad with loot lust. Bilak admits crystals are better suited to magic jewelry than weapons. Fortunately, she knows one of the best jewelers for the job, Darnyata. Unfortunately, to get the jewels to Darnyata, Bilak is forced to summon hyperactive Kate Sith Aramis, vice captain of Kaziria, the Kate Sith Kingdom. Needing rest, Rakuro logs out and ends up ignoring messages from Arthur and Katso to meet for something important. He returns to Bilak and discovers that, since Kate Sithas are notorious for stealing from customers, she told Kaziria's king all about Rakuro, who responded by offering him all of Kaziria's support in the form of Aramis as a party member. Bilak thus explains to Rakuro that due to being recognized by Lycagon and slaying Weatherman, in political terms Rakuro is now as powerful as an entire kingdom, which has some advantages, but comes with the risk if he is not careful it is possible to start a full-scale war by accident. Rakuro decides to finally explore Eight Hold, but even disguised he is immediately recognized by a magical girl with a deep male voice who turns out to be Professor, Master of the Library the player clan that collects the lore and history of Shangri-La. As the first person in history to defeat a unique monster, he hopes to form a partnership with Rakuro to discover the real meaning behind the world of Shangri-La Frontier.